All right, we're going to do this problem, which is in your book on page 301, number 32. Go ahead and read that quick. If you need to pause the video, that's fine. Number 32 first asks us to find the moment of inertia about the center, and I have a negligible mass on the rod in between, and I have two point masses on the end. So really, this is a multiple point mass situation. When I have multiple point masses, I'm going to add up the moment of inertia of one of them plus the other. So let's go ahead and find the moment of inertia for a point mass. So for a point mass, my moment of inertia is going to be just mr squared, where r is from the axis of rotation to the mass. So for the one on the left here, i is going to equal m times l over 2 squared. For the one on the right, i is going to equal m times l over 2 squared. It doesn't matter the direction on the r, just the distance. Now to find the total, I have to simply add together the i values to get the total moment of inertia of my multiple mass system. So I add these two together, they're the same. So I get i total is equal to 2 times m l over 2 quantity squared. And we can go ahead and then simplify that down a little bit. And I get i total is equal to 1 half m l squared. All right. For the second part, now it asks me to find the moment of inertia about one-fourth the length. Okay, so now I've changed my moment of inertia's location. Now notice that I've actually moved this one in closer, so it should have a smaller moment of inertia, but I've moved this one further away, so it has a much larger moment of inertia. And if you remember, moment of inertia is proportional to r squared. Okay, keep that in mind. So. We're going to go ahead and do the same setup. So we find the moment of inertia for the one on the left, and it is m times l over 4 squared. Find the one on the right, and I get m times l over 4, oops, 3 l over 4 squared. It's good enough, 3, I think. Um, we're going to go ahead and sum up the i's to get i total. And when we do that, um, just to walk you through it. So this is 1 16th ml squared over here. This is going to be 9 16th ml squared. So that gives me a total of 10 16ths or 5 eighths ml squared. Now what you're going to notice for a lot of moments of inertia, you're going to have typically a coefficient times m times the length squared. Um, and this is going to play true in our next problem as well. Now if I go ahead and look at these two problems kind of side by side here, for the one-fourth the length, I got five-eighths. For the half, I got one-half. So you'll notice that five-eighths is a little bit bigger than one-half. What that means is because moment of inertia is dependent on r squared, this one's further out, that bigger r makes a big difference. And so we get the larger moment of inertia.